I am so excited for this week. We are going to kick off the first in a four-part series of our Titanic extravaganza. This year marks the 107th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. I have loved the story of the Titanic since I was seven years old. I have literally read hundreds of books on the subject and countless documentaries. So when this cookbook came out, Last Dinner on the Titanic, I was beside myself. Finally, we could recreate just a tiny portion of what it must have been like on the Titanic. Using actual historical data, this cookbook was able to piece together what was served on the Titanic on third, second, and even first class. You may be wondering how we know what was served on the Titanic, especially on that last night, and we know in two different ways. The menus on the Titanic were actually designed to be postcards and taken home as souvenirs. And that's exactly what a lot of the passengers did. At the dinner table, they would take their menu, stick it in their pocket, and then later that night actually got into lifeboats with those menus still in their pockets. The second way, and perhaps the most sad, is the fact that some of those passengers who stuck those postcards in their pockets didn't actually make it to the lifeboats. And so when they were pulled from the sea later, their menus were found in their pockets, crumpled and waterlogged. All of their effects would have been collected, carefully cataloged, and then sent to surviving family members. All of those effects were then passed from generation to generation, preserved for history, until today when some of those menus were actually donated by family members to exhibits so that we can see them and to know exactly what that person ate the last night they were alive. So, before we get cooking, I'm actually gonna take you on just a small tour of what it would have been like in the revolutionary accommodations of third class on the Titanic. So grab a cup of coffee or a bit of tea, sit back and enjoy. On Titanic, first class was beautiful, but the White Star Line knew the real money to be made was in third class. No expense was spared making third class as inviting as possible, including the addition of a fourth dummy funnel because the going belief among immigrants was the more funnels a ship had, the stronger and safer she would be. Let's begin our journey in third class by embarking with the Goodwin family from London. Frederick and Augusta and their six children were shown to their cabins. They were clean and comfortable with fresh linens, towels, and water basins. And best of all, three complete and delicious meals were included in each ticket. Whereas just a few short years before, they would have been required to bring their own food for a week's passage. Third class had its own kitchen with a staff dedicated to making nutritious and varied meals for the 709 passengers from dozens of different countries. This included a Jewish chef, Charles Kennel, to ensure meals were kosher for Jewish passengers and exotic foods many passengers had never had before, such as oranges. The white enamel dining rooms featured family-style seating with crisp linen tablecloths and actual waiters to serve all your needs. The Goodwins would have felt they were on a splendid holiday on their way to good fortune in an exciting new country. Tragically, this was not to be as on the night of April 14, 1912, every member of the family was lost. It's hard to say what happened to the Goodwins. They may have stayed below, or they may have reached the upper decks along with the rest of third class, who were finally allowed above after all the boats had already been launched. Only the body of two-year-old Sidney was found. He was buried in Halifax, Canada, in a memorial to the unknown child paid for by the sailors who recovered his body from the sea. He was finally identified through DNA in 2008. The good ones stand as a testimony to the great disparity between the classes on the Titanic. The best accommodations in the world mattered little when all the lifeboats were gone. 
For this recipe, you will need one onion chopped, one potato peeled and cubed, one cup of celery chopped, one cup of asparagus tips, one cup of carrots chopped, five garlic cloves minced, two tablespoons of butter, one teaspoon each of oregano and thyme and one bay leaf, one cup of corn, two cups of white kidney beans drained and rinsed, two cups of spinach, salt and pepper to taste, and six cups of chicken or vegetable broth. In your biggest pot, melt your butter over medium heat. Stir in your onion, celery, carrot, potato, garlic, oregano, thyme, and bay leaf. Stir it to coat in the butter. Cover and then cook it for about 10 minutes, making sure you check it and stir it often. After your onions are nice and translucent, you're going to stir in your chicken or vegetable stock and bring that to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, reduce your heat down and simmer it for about 15 to 20 minutes or until your vegetables are almost tender. Now you're going to add in more vegetables. Stir in your beans, your corn, and asparagus tips and cook for another five minutes or until the asparagus is a bright green. Stir in your Swiss chard or your spinach. I use spinach because that was what I found on sale. Let that spinach start to cook down and go ahead and find your bay leaf and take it out so your guests don't find a surprise in their soup bowl. Season it with salt and pepper to taste, and you are ready to serve. Third class dishes on the Titanic were very plain, so I served mine in the plainest bowls I have just to keep with historical accuracy. Okay, so we just finished the soup. It smells heavenly. It's been so hard to have to wait for this. <laughs> but first, we gotta wait just a little bit longer because we're gonna do the TCT oh, yeah. cookbook collector's test. So in terms of time, I'm actually gonna give this a four. I did not think that this was a homemade soup that took any more or any less time than any other homemade soup. Okay. So if you're used to making homemade soup, you're gonna be fine with this. But yeah, I would say this is a pretty quick soup. Four? Yeah, I'll give it a four. Right. In terms of cost, I'm giving this a five. I mean, yeah. I have less than $10 in this soup and it serves six. So let's do the taste. Oh, I can't wait. Okay. That is so good. It's very savory. It's so, you know, it's comforting. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. It's very comforting because it's so warm and it's just, it's got so many rustic flavors into it with the oregano and the asparagus and, uh, and the potatoes. So, I'm giving this a five. Yeah, I could do a five. Well, now don't do a five just because I do. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I might be a little biased because since it was served on the Titanic, mm -hmm. I could be giving it a five because- I would probably yeah. do a four. Let's it's split in really the middle. Good. Four and, and a half. Yeah, let's split in the middle then and go four and a half. Okay. Okay, so it'll be like maybe a little bit more um, realistic. <laughs> oh, okay, so we've got a five, five a four, four, and a four and a half. Our TCT cookbook collectors for vegetable soup from the Titanic, yep. 4.5. Now, in terms of the cookbook itself, this is definitely getting a five for me. It, If you are a history buff, if you are a Titanic nut like me, you are going to fall head over heels in love with this book. It's got so many stories so much history in here. To focus solely on the food, I think was a brilliant move. Now, stay tuned for next week because we're going to bump our accommodations up just a little bit and go into second class where we will be making a dinner from that kitchen. Mm. Yeah, so stay tuned for that. I'm excited, I can't wait. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this foray into historical food and we are going to end it here so we can eat our soup because it we're just hungry. <laughs> it smells so good. We just I'm, have to. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, holding myself back. So, <laughs> right. so thank you guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and hit the subscribe button for future videos. In the meantime, here are two videos you may enjoy. Thanks for watching.